time has expired. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Tiffany. Mr. Abt, are you saying the lockdowns did not work? Uh, I'm the not lockdowns sure I... led to higher crime is what I heard you say. No, I certainly did not say that, uh, uh, Congressman. Uh, can you repeat the question? Um, you said during the COVID um, lockdowns that crime went up in 2020. During the pandemic, they went up, yes. And so the American people were locked down. I came here and uh, I was sworn in here on May 19th of 2020. I couldn't believe I could drive from the suburbs of Virginia to this location right here in about five minutes. Nobody was here. You said violent crime went up. So didn't the COVID lockdowns, um, weren't they part of the contributing factor? I think that's an inappropriate connection between these two. I can't speak to that. Deputy Mayor, DC Council Chairman Phil Mendelson said there is not a crime crisis in Washington, DC. Do you agree with him? Oxford defines a crisis as a time of intense difficulty, trouble, or danger. And so I would say that we find ourselves in an intense time of trouble or danger. So I would say there is a crisis. Anytime someone's a victim of crime in the district, regardless of the number. Mr. Chairman, sounds like we've identified part of the problem here with the DC Council when somebody will not acknowledge that there's a crisis. And by the very definition, Ed, as the Deputy Mayor said, um, there is a crisis. Uh, Mr. Pemberton, um, so we're hearing about guns are the problem and guns coming from other states are the problem. Are crimes being prosecuted to their fullest that include guns here in D.C.? Is prosecution, are the judges giving the fullest sentences they can with gun crimes? Uh, no, absolutely not. So uh, some of the rhetoric that we hear around crime in the district is, is that it comes from illegal guns and that we have to focus on illegal guns and that if, if we find a way to get illegal guns out of the hands of criminals, crime will come down. Um, and that's not necessarily wrong. And uh, the, our officers for our union, I think last year we arrested about 3,100 people um, for possession of an illegal firearm. The problem is, is that even when we're able to get those cases papered and prosecuted and then a conviction, uh, the, the average sentence that judges are handing out right now for that penalty is six months supervised, supervised release, which is zero jail time. Um, that, that is the, the going rate, is what we say, uh, for people who are in possession of illegal guns. Uh, repeat that, six months? Six months of supervised probation. So that would be someone who's convicted of being in possession of an illegal firearm in the District of Columbia. Um, the, the, the maximum penalty is five years under the D.C. Code. Uh, however, the penalties that D.C. Uh, Superior Court judges are handing out regularly are, are more along the lines of probation only. Probation only for a gun crime. That's right, and just to, to make a finer point on this, it doesn't seem like the city takes those crimes as seriously as they suggest, given the fact that the courts are not penalizing people who are found uh, convicted of those crimes. Was that your experience, Mr. Jablonski? Absolutely. If I didn't make that victim impact statement, the defense's attorney, the defendant's attorney was asking for a divergence, and I was told by the DAs afterwards that they're glad that I came because most likely he would have received divergence. Is victim services doing their job in D.C.? I mean, they were very nice and, you know, they were helpful. Um, but there's really, you know, the only, the only thing I wanted, that I wanted to see real justice. I wanted to see something that showed me that they took into account what happened to me and my family. And what I saw wasn't. Mr. Sobolewski, is victim services doing their job in Washington, D.C.? I'd say they're doing their job. Um, it's hard to say that the police, the prosecutors, and the judges are doing their jobs. Maybe the police are out there making arrests. Prosecutors aren't prosecuting. What is, what's going on there? Judges, they're, they're letting criminals out on the street. My guy was given one year in jail. What did he do within weeks upon release? My father-in-law was murdered by a guy with a rap sheet to 1971. Why, would, why are they on the streets? Have you lost, Mr. Pemberton, have you lost officers to other jurisdictions around this region? 
Oh, absolutely, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of the officers that leave have been uh, going to neighboring jurisdictions. Uh, particularly, what's interesting is uh, Northern Virginia takes a lot of our members. I'm going to close with this, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to re, um, uh, make the case once again. I want this committee to come to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to hear the story here. We've heard it in New York City, Chicago, and now in Washington, D.C. I urge this committee and the chairman to schedule a hearing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where the district attorney said, will I divert some who will go on to kill someone? Absolutely. That's the problem here in the United States of America is a soft on crime attitude. Hey, Jim.